aspects of uh, an and um, so uh, you know, short outline of my talk is the motivation uh, why should we talk about uh, the biological aspects and then there was uh, some uh, some math and some topology about the uh, linking number and then I will show you the connection of the linking number with uh, the mafia mechanicity. And then I'll show you um, the tree file knot, which is a knot which has a linking number of, I think, three, and uh, which I also implemented in, in the pencil code. Well, not completely, but almost. And then I will show some results of simulations with uh, three flux tubes, uh, which was which are formed as rings and which are interlocked, which show a picture how it looks like. And there are, I got uh, a few results. And then I will make some outlooks for the future and for the future work of the next two or three months, because this is actually a work in progress. Actually, it's uh, just started. And um, so just for you, show you some uh, very basic uh, first results at the end. Okay, so what should we care about the uh, linking number in magnetic flux tubes? Well, it's uh, because with differential rotation and uh, due to the alpha and the omega effect uh, in the sun, um, you may create uh, so some kind of flux tubes. And um, so these flux tubes really can exist in the sun just because of this uh, alpha and omega effect. And um, so they are supposed also to uh, give rise to the heating in the, uh, in the corona of the sun. So this is uh, an, an assumption, an idea which people have. And well, that's the reason why those uh, flux rings um, are quite important to uh, Investigate. Well, then the reason why people think it's uh, heating up is because of the magnetic connection. So you have, uh, for example, two tubes like this, and they somehow change the, pho the topology, and they like become one tube. And uh, during this process, uh, it's believed that uh, this can lead up to heating. So that's why we should uh, consider this. I don't have any citation for this assumption, but. Heating of the corona? Heating of the corona and some of my particular connection. But the book that you had? Yeah, is it there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've got also <coughs> the book as a citation. And Parker, certainly. And there's a book by Parker. Okay. A special, a special one about heating. Okay, first I will talk about some quite basic math and some linking numbers. Uh, so consider two flux tubes of uh, my main flux. Suppose B is. Uh, all the same in this tube, so it's not changing with uh, the radius. So it's always the same uh, here, but so with different direction, of course. And um, now we just want, so in this B field, also, uh, since there is a B field, there is also an A field, because uh, B is curl uh, of A. And uh, we want to calculate uh, the line integral of A um, along this curve C line. So I'm just sample uh, like this, and you can transform this with the with Stokes to a surface integral, the curve of A1, the S, while the S is a, uh, is a surface which is enclosed by this curve here. Actually, you can take any curve, uh, any surface which is enclosed by this curve. And, um, well, and of course, uh, the curve of A is B. And since the only non vanishing uh, contribution to this B field on this surface is, uh, comes from uh, this ring here. So that's the reason why I put there B2. And um, this integral, I mean, you see this immediately, is uh, sim simply. Uh, B2 times the radius of the tube. 
and V2 times the range of the tubes, of course, the magnetic flux, which I denoted as uh, phi 2. So this was something, uh, actually, I've seen this already before. Uh, this, uh, in okay, so questions on this? Okay. Um, so why is this important for linking numbers? Because, of course, when you take, when you take many, of those tubes, uh, these flux rings C2, you of course get n times phi 2. And you've got n tubes, you get n times uh, phi, two, uh, phi 2. And, uh, well, there is another quite general formula by Paolo. Um, so consider two, two curves, arbitrary curves. And um, you can calculate uh, the linking number between those two curves uh, just by this uh, double integral, double curve integral over both of the, uh, of the Take another pen, that's not good. So that's in the bin, in the bin. Yeah. You just take the double line integral of this, and then you simply get the linking number between uh, those two curves. I think this is uh, known from electrodynamics because uh, when you calculate the force between two uh, between two rings where there is some uh, current, then then it's the same, I mean, it's from electrodynamics. And you say Euler formula, is that not Gauss? What was it, what was Gauss? Well, probably it was Gauss, yeah. Oh, no. Actually, it's, it's on the oh, same. Uh, actually, Euler yeah. was with the German. Yeah. Okay. So now, now we have seen how to calculate the linking number between two distinct rings. And uh, how to calculate the linking number in in a knot because before we had a uh, double integral so we had uh, two um, two distinct like one or two and uh, actually you can change this to ci ci li and li then you also get the, the linking number of this knot but uh, uh, Moffat uh, showed a yeah quite uh, simple example how to do it in a different way and when you've got this knot here which is which has a linking number of one and you take the same integral as before like uh, the line integral of a along this curve and this you can split off into two integrals line integrals one here and one here and these two curves, one and C2, they don't have a linking number by themselves, but they are linked, so uh, the whole thing has linking number one. And here you can just use the previous formula and get a linking number uh, of this uh, whole thing, which is the same as the linking number of this uh, single curve. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So the uh, lower thing can be disconnected. Yeah, it can be disconnected because I mean, uh, you, you take the line integral along this uh, curve, uh -huh. and it's the same when you take it when you go like this direction and C1, and the opposite direction. I mean, it's negative, so it cancels at the end. No, they are connected. They are the the two links, yeah, but independently they are. Yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. because so you see one by itself is not a linking number, it's yes. a linking number of zero. Yes, so topologically it's equivalent to the previous case of, of exactly this, one would think. Exactly, yes. But then the linkage chamber should be the same. Well, it is, yeah. Yes. Uh, right. It's the same also because of because the integral is the same, the line integral is the same. Yes. The line integral is proportional to the linkage chamber. But the number of crossings, uh, that also comes up to be uh, no, what is then the number of crossings? You have, uh, you have three crossings. But those cancel in those two, right? Yeah. Two of them cancel, but, um, but for example, in this case, two of them are constructive. 
Uh, actually, here should be two destructive and one, one constructive, so on the opposite. Uh, so we have linking them of one and minus one. Two, yeah, okay. That's why here you can split it in only two. Oh, uh -huh. two rings. So then, what, yes, okay, fine. And then what is. Uh -huh. uh, if it's logically equivalent to this one, it should be two times um, phi squared. The flux, but it cannot be if it has three crossing uh, crossings. I thought. So what is the number? The, 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 the helicity then, or the negative number, or the helicity rather? Uh, well, the linking number is just as I showed before, um, uh, two times. Uh, uh, the line flow of A along this curve is two times the linking number times phi times the flux, uh, the flux. Mm -hmm. So and since uh, this integral here is the same as when you split it, mm -hmm. directly that you can't calculate the linking number of a single um, curve, which mm -hmm. is a lot, uh, by just splitting it up in uh, two independent groups. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's a way to make it clear why you can do this. Yeah, that's with that's a single right. Okay, uh, so now I make the connection to magnetic helicity. Uh, so the magnetic helicity is just uh, integral of volume integral of a times b, and um, from this uh, quite good book on magnetic connection, uh, it's shown that you can calculate with the magnetic helicity um, the linking number, and uh, you, you take not the uh, whole magnetic helicity, but uh, because of mutual magnetic helicity, uh, which is um, integral of um, AI times uh, BJ. And AI comes from uh, one curve, BJ comes from the other curve. So that's why it's called mutual. And so, uh, well, that's simply uh, two times the linking number times the fluxes. So that's uh, the way to calculate the linking number of electricity. So uh, when, it's, when you change the helicity, the mutual helicity, uh, also the topology of the flux rings changes because the uh, linking number may also change. So you might also get some kind of preconnection. Questions? Okay, so now at this point, uh, I try to make the pre file mod. This is a picture from Wikipedia, uh, a nice one, and uh, I simply made a function um, which is a circle, basically, which is uh, stretched, which is uh, pulled towards the uh, z direction uh, with a certain function. So when this is the parameter t, the uh, is it called a curve parameter, t, then, or theta, we call it theta, then it's uh, stretched with a certain function uh, towards the subplane, uh, which I have chosen to be sine squared because it looks quite smoothly, and um, if you take the tangential of this curve, it's also smooth by choosing this function here. And then, that's like a spiral. Kind of it is, it's yeah, it's exactly. It's kind of spiral, yeah. But uh, a spiral usually has, uh, well, this function is um, linear ah, okay. for a pure spiral. But I modified it with this uh, size curve function. So you have it a different uh, okay. And the reason for this also because of this because of the tangent uh, to be also smooth. Mm -hmm. Because the tangent at the end is actually B field, and I want the B field not to change abruptly when I uh, get at the end of the circle here. Mm -hmm. So it's quite smooth. And then, there are, then I just have a kind of line here. And I basically take uh, three of those uh, objects, put them together to different angles, and then I get this thing here. Uh, 
this suspension. Uh, I did this in a plot first because I just wanted to see it. You can try it later interactively, then you can visualize it better three dimensionally. So that's how it looks like in the plot. So then I went over to the pencil code because we wanted to do all the simulations with this. We wanted to have um, this kind of magnetic field as the initial condition for our simulations. And so I just changed the file magnetic uh, f And I added a new subroutine, three file node flux tube. And uh, well, there were some lines from it. And at the end, I just calculated the magnetic field. And the uh, thing is, uh, I didn't get too far at this point because, well, actually, I almost finished, but uh, I have to change it to um, vector potential. Because the personal code is calculated with A, the vector potential, and not with B. So I still have to change it to, to the vector potential. Then I can do simulations. So, uh, because I couldn't do simulations with this mod, but yet, uh, we chose, well, I actually told me to do this with uh, three rings. You've got three flux rings, which are connected like this. And uh, we have a uh, flux uh, distribution, uh, Gaussian flux uh, distribution. So when you take here the cut, uh, you've got something like this. So this is the um, tube, and then you've got the Gaussian. This is the magnetic fields in direction of the tube. It's one of the profiles. Actually, you want later you want to change the profile to a constant and uh, see if there is some different physics going on. Okay, and of course, the make file of local uh, tells us about the physics, about the physical system we are simulating. And we are considering, of course, magnetic fields and uh, hydrodynamic equations, and the question of states is the one of ideal mass. And we've got also no gravity in this simulation. Uh, okay, these are some parameters. Well, I just wanted to show you if you also want to uh, do this by yourself. Uh, what, you, what do you need to change in the pencil card? So the Mac file for local, you see, and this is start.in, uh, which uh, tells us basically that we uh, get a Gaussian profile. And then the flux rings, the three flux rings, and then some parameters to the flux rings. And I only change, from the parameters, I only change the intensity or the magnitude of the flux of each ring. So I consider different fluxes uh, for the different rings. And well, initially, the surface case is just every ring has the same flux, so in magnetic field. And then I change them. Uh, to different values and look at the physics. Okay, so I first need to explain what is this actually. This is um, this is the magnetic flux of the left ring, uh, central ring, and the right ring. So this is uh, and here I plotted the time and the magnetic energy. This is the green curve and the magnetic helicity, which is uh, uh, the right curve here. And here are the axis for the velocity, and this is for the magnetic energy. And here we see that the magnetic energy is uh, decreasing if all the rings have the same flux. And uh, of course, when you look ca more carefully at it, you should assume immediately that the linking number is zero of this configuration. And um, as you can see here, this is uh, helicity, which is Roughly the, well, this is roughly the precision of the simulation. So the helicity is actually zero. It's pretty much zero. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, these are simulations that I just did before uh, this presentation. So I haven't drawn too many conclusions out of it. Out of it. Uh, so here's another configuration with uh, an auto ring. It's high. 
So as you can see, uh, it's the same as in the first one, the magnetic energy is uh, decreasing here. And well, actually, initially we thought that the decrease of magnetic energy comes actually from reconnection. But uh, then the linking number should uh, change, and also the helicity should change, which um, yeah, one is one you don't see. Uh, the linkage, um, the helicity can be unchanged if you convert linkage into internal twist. So the helicity is actually, of course, given by the rise, num there's a rise number and a twist number. So you can convert in principle at least one into the other. But that's really going on, I don't know yet. That's, um, yeah, the helicity should mathematically be at least conserved up to resistive terms. Uh -huh. So this was, uh, yeah, so this one is decreasing because of the minus sign slightly after the connection time, yes. Okay, uh, well I will go through this quickly because um, I haven't made any conclusions on this. But when you said, um, let, let me see again, you changed the intensity of the event flux, yeah? And the signs were the same, or what is it? Uh, the, the sign is the same, yeah, because it's far too important. The sign is the yes. same. Uh-huh, right, okay. Do you have that minus number, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Just the day before? Yes. This one? Yes. Uh -huh. And, uh, Okay, here the linking number is not zero, but it's uh, two um, because of the different sign of the um, flux tubes. Okay, and yes, you see actually basically the same that uh, the beginning of got a quite steep decrease, the magnetic energy, and there's some kind of uh, plateau here, but uh, I think I have to run the simulation for a longer time because here we usually see an increase. This takes usually quite some time for simulation. Well, that may be because at that time the resolution runs out um, for that given viscosity. But actually, uh, the resolution gets uh, quite high at the end. I mean, the, the time resolution. Yeah, yeah, but the space, but that's simply because the uh, velocities get very high, I guess. Mm -hmm. The connection is proceeding and, um, and you cannot resolve it, especially. That's what forces the time step to be very short. And maybe there's already because in the solution. Have you looked at the... Uh, no, not yet. Well, I tested the simulations. Mm -hmm. They took quite some time. Uh, was that... Yes. Was the flux 0.2 here, or how much was the flux? Or was uh, it yes, yes. Actually, two stands were 0.2, yes. Yes, okay. okay. It's just a relative... Just a relative uh, from yeah, basically, you see pretty much the same. The helicity is basically zero here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, well, uh, this was, we have work in progress, starting, mm -hmm. uh, started work. So, um, there are many outlooks. So, what should we do in the project, in this project? Uh, well, first, I think I should finish to implement the tree fibers in the passive field. And uh, maybe also some other notes, like uh, witness comes with not, you know this not? Mm -hmm. So here at witness comes with, it says a linking number of four. And uh, well, you can go also if you go home and have a look at it. You could have had it in your talk. I had it in my talk sometimes. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I uh, thought of adding also this one. Yeah. You cannot. This is quite complicated. What was the linking number again? Zero. Yeah. Zero, yeah? Okay, so suggesting that nobody in the institute is connected with anybody else. Then there are the Celtic uh, notes. <laughs> Celtic? Yeah. By the way, there's a book, and not theory, of course. And it actually has all, I mean, it's really a thick book. And there's thousands of different knots. Uh, three for another is one of them. Now I forget who was the author. I, I know who was shown in the book. And there's what maybe. Yeah. What? <laughs> Who was the name? <laughs> Sailor. <maybe>. Sailor, ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, th 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 that was the initial motivation. 
Okay, and something else uh, we should do is, uh, at least concerning the pencil code, uh, to rewrite the subroutines I wrote to a, a nicer uh, notation with matrix and vectors, because Fortran um, can use matrices and vectors, and so I won't need to use components. But that's, that's a technical detail. And uh, physical <coughs> envelope, of course, we want to draw some conclusions out of, out of this, so we should uh, look. Um, more carefully at what's happening actually and how is the magnetic field evol evolving and especially how the energy is transformed from uh, magnetic to thermal to uh, kinetic energy. It's uh, I think a quite important aspect we should look into. And um, yeah, of course, look at different profiles, maybe there's some change in physics when we use different profiles. And uh, also we should see if the reconnection of the magnetic fields is actually responsible for the easing of the corona. Because this, this is an idea people have, but uh, I think nobody has proven it or disproven it. And the, uh, well, since most of you are working with me, I made some personal outlook about uh, some uh, things I should learn, like learn more about Fortran and get more experience in it, because it's uh, new to me, and also learn more about uh, how to code works, pencil code, and for making very nice uh, plots and maybe also videos, movies, uh, learn more about Python, and uh, of course, which is very important, I think, also in, especially in business. And industry to make a very short process time. So uh, when we have an idea, to quickly develop it into a paper and to into reasonable results. <laughs> what does that supposed to mean? What? What do you mean by that? Uh, process time. You, you have got oh. an idea, or ah. you have a customer who wants to get something, and you should have to act on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the time between idea and final result? And uh, yeah, well, that's quite a lot of work, I think, um, which we will have in the next two months. We will have the connection thing and not. And uh, yeah, well, thanks. Do you have any questions? Is this related <laughs> to your PhD? Huh? Is this related to your PhD? Uh, yeah, actually, I want to relate it to Actually, it's. Uh, when it, it's from the solar physics course uh, project, but I think I, we can use this to make some uh, some real um, research. Mm. I mean, this was just uh, just the beginning. No, I think it's first, first try to make something. It says it looks uh, beyond the uh, extended beyond the course. Uh, yeah, well, well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, at the end, it should go much much further, much much more. Beyond. Yeah, any other questions? Or suggestions? What observations are there of solar chronic today? Um, that's a question to me, yeah? Ideally, I'd like to set someone who has more like a hero. I mean, it's uh, thought that the corona is heated by what is often called nanoflares. And they're called nanoflares because uh, a big flare does apparently not have yeah, enough. Are they right? called nanoflares because they're too small for us to see? So yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't know what they're actually there. Exactly. Um, I mean, you do see these reconnection. You, you, you see so called micro flares. So those are seen. And so, um, and then because one wanted to have another name for them, one called them nanoflares. So they are, and, and Parker associates them with uh, the gradual folding of a, of a structure like this. And that would be to have maybe several strings, ah, two strings like this. So you have a string like this, um, a few lines like this, but then your foot point twisting. And then you twist them and then you get them. 
touches with each other, these flux tubes. And that will cause uh, reconnection. And there are simulations that were of another one, Klaus Gosberg, uh, of 96, which have demonstrated that the amount of feeding is equal to the amount of energy that you're able to put into the system by doing work on the footprints, which is uh, U dot J cross B term. But once you are able to put that type of energy into the system, it will be dissipated into, into heat. So that the first point was the question important one, whether they can actually do that. But certainly in the numerical experiments that have, people have been doing, one was able to do that. Does it actually get dissipated into heat or get dissipated into an alcohol energy spectrum by the electrons? No, probably both. Certainly heating also because we know the corona is hot. But they, we also know that there's no thermal emission from the corona. It just comes more or less directly. Any other questions? Okay. My f uh, own uh, comment would be to say that it's uh, excellent that you looked at into this, and I think that uh, the future prospects of this are probably uh, broader than we can imagine at this point, but one of the applications is clearly the um, that it helps in understanding magnetic helicity better. And magnetic helicity is, of course, an important ingredient, as we have seen in uh, modern dynamo theory, one, for the one, but also an, an important observational diagnostics. And so based on that, we can, because of that, we can uh, use this work to better understand the working of um, MHD in the presence of knotted and helical structures. So, and the other thing is, is that uh, indeed there are many such symbols out there, and I, uh, and I think certain people will be very delighted by seeing what is the science behind those logos that they use. I mean, those people at Eaton's Garden have no idea, I guess, um, most of them perhaps at least. And, uh, and so I think this would be a good contribution which uh, they should at least be impressed about. And I know that uh, Tandas Vami Subramanian from Ayuka um, was very interested in the outcome of this type of work. So we certainly know for sure that there will be some people interested in that from the uh, point of view of understanding uh, the what happens with that. Uh, the other thing is uh, a knotted structure is topologically uh, cannot be undone, so not at least stri straightforwardly. And so that means the decay of magnetic energy in a simulation where the resistivity is finite, the decay should be uh, halted or should be um, slowed down under the presence of knotted structures as opposed to unknotted structures. And, um, and that's the first thing that we should be able to uh, verify, and I think Moffat has done some work on that, we can look into that. And s but secondly, if you have a knotted structure where the linkage number is actually zero, um, this constraint mathematically should not be a constraint anymore, even though topologically it should be a constraint. And the hypothesis is that there should be higher order invariance than just those quadratic ones and just A or B. So there should be a triple and fourth order, higher order correlations uh, where some people have been working on that, and whether or not those are really relevant is an open question. Whether those are relevant to describing the physical uh, process of magnetic field relaxation. So that would lead to a number of unsolved mathematical and physical problems here. Yeah. Actually, I thought uh, maybe we could implement this and make some three dimensional simulations uh, from the thing we showed in Helsinki. Uh, maybe we have some, we, we can creates some dissipation of magnetic helicity from the magnetic connection. So we have a transformation of magnetic energy to heat and so get rid of magnetic helicity and so um, alleviate the tension. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Have you tried light savoring and its emotions? No, that's <laughs> not the only thing I uh, Lightsaber. The lightsaber, in principle, we know works, but it doesn't parallelize correctly. So it's a mistake, I think. 
That's fair. But if you didn't want to see a lightsaber zero and there's no first simulation. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, we have uh, those on the computer. But we didn't show any animations of that yet. Uh, well, actually, you know, the thing is actually that I uh, was mainly working on this uh, pre yes. And then yesterday at 10 o'clock, I know it's okay. Three rings simulations. That's why the three ring simulations. So, but yes. I wanted to talk about on this lifesaver thing, but I uh, didn't have time. The light table. Uh, I mean, the good thing about uh, the visualization of the one picture that you showed there was uh, it's uh, done with an external light source. Uh, that's how the, how the number idea routine works. You have an external light source, and and so you have uh, reflection and and shadowing even on the backside of that structure, because the light source comes from a different direction than the viewing direction. So that's. Uh, if you really want a high quality visual, 3D visualization, then that's certainly better. Uh, but it only works up to the resolution that can be fit into an IDL, which is limited. You can try backboard. Hmm? Backboard. What's that? Backboard. It's like, it's a problem that in NCAR. Uh-huh. Vapor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, vapor you can use. That's another good thing. Um, and that can actually work with high resolution. Yeah, yes, that's a good thing. We should look into that, if anything. Because it's, that, uh, it's, it's risky to convert from IDL to vapor and then to just open the data queue. And, and we have already yes, an, an output channel, um, which actually however, works at the moment via IDL. But that's probably used for trivial reasons. So we can write the vapor files out of IDL at the moment. But you really want to do it directly out of the code. Good, all right, so then let's uh, think first of our Simon again. <laughs> and I think now we should uh, discuss when uh, 